Lindsay here, the frugal crafter, along with my crafty friends, Lorraine and Kathy. I kind of decided, like, oh, who am I going to point to first? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see myself off there. Uh, we are here for another episode of Ask a Crafter. And uh, we have a lot of questions to go through, so uh, we're going to get right to it. Lorraine, you want to ask okay. the first question? Pauline says, hi girls, missed you this summer. I have a question. I recently bought a pad of Carlton Acid Acid Free. 146 pound paper and it was awful with watercolors it bled through to the rear of the paper can you advise me if this is only suitable for colored pencils it does show a paintbrush on the front so i thought it would work i must say i usually buy 140 pound cold press but thought i would try this for a change okay so i'm going to talk a little bit about the differences in paper so i know you go to the store and you look at weight and you look at the type of paper it is so um, 140 pound is a pretty standard weight for watercolor paper and um, then you can choose between different brands and you'll notice that there'll be big price differences so if you look at like a pad of arches it may be 30 40 dollars you look at a pad of Canson it might be 20 you know 50 to 20 dollars you look at a pad of you know no name store brand it might be five dollars so you're thinking well it's what they're all watercolor paper they're all the same weight why should I spend you know forty dollars if I can get this for five and you know sometimes price really doesn't indicate but in this instance the reason why the $40 paper is $40 is because it's made with 100% cotton and it's made with long fiber cotton so it's a very strong resilient paper that's not going to buckle and wrinkle it's kind of if you think about like Egyptian cotton sheets versus you know the character you know sheets mm -hmm. you buy for your kids right. and you touch their sheets like oh my gosh it's like slipping on sandpaper but like <laughs> your sheets are super super soft it's the same idea so then when you step down from the you know the premium paper then you'll you could have paper that's 100 percent cotton but it might be shorter fibers so uh, it's usually all right but it may pill it may um a little bit if you overwork it you may have to kind of keep it for easy techniques and not for really hard paintings you might go back in and, and scrub out areas and whatnot and then you get to the cheaper paper which is made from wood pulp and um depending on how much sizing which is basically like a glue that they put on paper to um make it so the paint stays on top instead of absorbing into the paper a lot um it may work well or it may not and then you've also got the fiber length again so you've got longer fibers and your more expensive cotton uh wood pulp paper and then you've got the shorter kind of the dregs that are left behind after all the good paper gets made <laughs> then they sell that crap to the well sorry to the you know the other companies that don't want to pay for the really good paper like the student grade or the kids grade paper um so that paper since it's short little pieces when you go to paint if you try to go in there with a race or you try to like scrub a little bit those little ends little flags little pieces mm. of paper stick up just like on cheap fabric yep. if you're working with cheap fabric oh, yeah. and you get a lot of tell. thread and dust and uh. you know wear and tear um so it's the same idea so even though you might have 146 pound which you think would be better than 140 pound if it's made with wood pulp short fibers and no sizing it's going to be rubbish but you could take that paper and you could you know use some stencils and some spray ink and you know make some scrap if it's acid free make some like scrapbook papers make some card backs you know use it for something you don't have to throw it away um but then i would stick to a trusted name like i know canson and strathmore um like strathmore 400 series and canson that canson's actually made by owned arches is owned by canson so they're not going to let rubbish paper out of their store their their reputation i think is a little bit too important for them to let junk go out so even the cheapest like the canton montville is going to be decent paper it's got enough sizing in it that it's not going to lift up and pill um so i think that's what happened to you there i know sometimes like you can go to the grocery store and you buy those little pads of watercolor paper for your kids that's kind of the kind mm -hmm. the paper i'm talking about it's just not it's kind of meant that you'd give it to your kids maybe and let them let them paint on it but you know use it for mixed media techniques you could gesso it we get asked a lot about gesso and when to gesso and when not to gesso you could gesso that paper and use it for like acrylics or you know it, the watercolor might not uh stick to the gesso very well so you know you can definitely use it for something but i would go for like a strathmore or a canton if you're you know budget-minded and you want some paper just to practice with uh they would be definitely suitable choices so that's what happened there i'm pretty sure use it for something it's just not going to work very well for you for watercolor and Lori asks does alcohol ink actually dry on ufo paper or do projects need to be sealed somehow 
Okay, Yupo paper, I've talked about it before. It's a synthetic, uh, really thin synthetic paper that does not buckle. Alcohol inks will dry on it uh, beautifully. Um, everything is supposed to eventually dry in Yupo, but I do notice that sometimes watercolor will take forever, especially if you um, apply it thickly. But acrylics and alcohol inks will just, they're just gonna dry anyway because of it's a type of a media they are. You're fine. And you don't need to seal it unless you want to. I think I can still consider Yupo as a paper, and if you're going to frame it, it should be under glass or plexiglass. You know, just because it's a paper. If something came across, it could be scratched, it could be, you know, it's just not as durable as canvas. So I don't think you need to seal it though. Is it is it possible to like help it along to dry or can you not apply heat? To don't it apply heat, it will shrink. Oh. Yeah. You, you might want I've done that to, to create special effects. I've shrunk parts of the paper before, but yeah, yeah, no heat on that. <laughs> no heat, okay. Letha Richardson from the Muse of Mine, this Muse of Mine, do you have an online resource for patterns to hand cut stencils, something royalty free and not a file for cutting machines? Um, the best thing you can do right there is just search free stencils, like you can, like Halloween, you can find so many, mm. like free cat stencil, free pumpkin stencils will give you so many ideas. Um, I just, I just do Google it, you know, mm. especially if you're using it for personal use. People put it up there to share in most mm. instances if you're seeing a stencil pattern. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would just yeah. Google it. Um, if you want just free clip art that you can use without worrying about copyright, um, there's a website called clicker.com. I think C-L-K-R.com, I believe is how it's spelled, but it's all royalty free. Um, clip arts and stuff you can use. Some of them are kind of cheesy, some of them are decent. It's a lot of a lot of users submitted stuff. Mm -hmm. But you know, honestly, if you're making something, you do need to, if you're making something that's not personally used, not, I mean, you're making something for your scrapbook, it, I wouldn't worry about it. But if you're making something that is going to go on a brochure or a flyer or a poster, oh, yeah. you know, make sure that, that you're doing sure. the right thing, you know, or pay a designer to use, right. you know, what you want, you know, legally. But yeah, C-L-K-R, I believe. Yeah, clicker.com. <laughs> Brenda says she can't wait, and that's about Ask a Crafter coming back. <laughs> this was one of the first, earlier have, comments. Have any of you created a generic pocket page scrapbook for scrapbook? Thanks, Brenda. Now, I was kind of confused on this question. Um, I did she mean like use the, like I use the Project Life pocket pages, but I don't use any of the Project Life product because I have right. so much paper and right. embellishments and stickers yeah. that I just, just I just make my own little cards. Right. That's all it is. Oh, you know how some good freebies. Um, my friend Marianne over at scrappy sticky inky mess <laughs> dot wordpress dot com. Uh, she has like a brilliant place to go. Yes, she's <laughs> fantastic. And if you jelly print stuff, you have got to check her out. I'll put a link below. I hopefully will remember to put it. if I don't Put a link below. Will somebody please share the link? Because I love it that you guys do that. I forget to put links and somebody's yeah. like, this is what she meant to do. <laughs> Read the comments. Somebody will have shared it. Um, well, anyways, Marianne has some really nice free printable Project Life cards. Oh. So check out her site. Um, but yeah, I make my own out of what I have left over because I just can't, I can't bring myself to buy. The kits are so cute, but I have so much stuff already. I think if you don't have anything, buying the kits is a great idea. But I just, I just use my scraps. Yeah. Scrap die Definitely. cuts. You know, get out the UFO box with all your scrap die cuts and stamped things you don't know what to do with and make your cards with that. Oh, yes, definitely. Melissa W. says, My Tim Holtz non-stick scissors are starting to stick. It seems like the Teflon is flaking off. What can I do to repair them? Yikes. Contact Tim Holtz. Yes, I bet you he will send you oh, a note. Yeah, he he is really good. Well, you know, our friend Tracy, she um, she had a problem with one of her dyes, and she emailed him, mm -hmm. and he personally emailed her back and said, hey, what's your address? Did. Personally. Oh, I believe it, because, yeah. you know, they, these, this company, he's That's just cool. started out small. Yeah. When he started out. Yeah, sent her a new one. No yeah. questions asked. Oh, yeah, so. most companies, if they're yeah. good, I they think if, if you're honest, too, I mean, yeah, yeah. I, like, I, I, my kid dropped his Kindle on the ground, and, um, and I was like, oh. 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 And I went on Amazon to see how long it was going to last with a crack in the screen. And oh. people were saying that they called up and they replaced it. So yeah. it was less than a year old. I called up. I'm like, you probably can't do anything. But my kid dropped his Kindle mm -hmm. on the ground and it cracked. You know, I'm like, I'm not going to lie. This, yeah. You know, he knows, yeah. you know, he's carrying too many things and he dropped it. And, um, 
it slipped out of his hands and you know talked to him and they said well we could sell you a you know one that's cheaper or for a cheaper price since it's it's mm -hmm. still pretty new and i'm like well it's still working i'm just gonna put a screen protector mm -hmm. on it and let him keep it and he's like hold on a second and he and he, he talked to his manager and came back because you know what we'll we'll replace this one time only you know mistakes happen you guys yeah. are a good customer yeah. so it's like you know honesty sometimes, best policy yeah, and sometimes it, it works out so and if you never ask the question the answer is always going to be no so yeah. contact him just and see if they can yeah. If they'll do do you right because he he do, that company doesn't want you to go out and say you know don't buy that because yeah, that didn't, exactly that only lasts me two months right they right. don't want to hear that right they know that does happen yeah I wonder so. if they make like a Teflon spray do you think they make that like for cookware or anything mm. well I don't know it's not really supposed to be that. Yeah, I don't, I don't, we don't, don't, use, well, we don't no. use anything tough no, on anymore because no. I would always burn it and yeah. then surprise. And then like the stuff would flake off. <laughs> yeah. All the birds in the neighborhood are keeling over. All these dead birds in the yard. You know, it's cooking if the fire alarm's going off. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I have one die, I have one setting on the on the stove and it's high. <laughs> Let's get it done as quickly as possible. I don't have oven privileges at my house. <laughs> oh, nice. How do you get rid of those anyway? I'd love to know how to get rid of my oh, oven yeah. privileges. When you make a birthday cake and it comes out so bad and it's that day. Oh, and my husband said that's the end of that. I broiled one once on birthday day. I think oh, it was one of Jackson's. Broiled I broiled it. Oh, cakes do not like to be broiled. I'll tell you that. No. Oh. I have Racist. nothing to do with that. <laughs> She's a good cook. I've been, I've been baking since I was yes. five, oh and I love it. <laughs> I've been burning food since I was 18. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I just can't imagine. I don't even know oh, what time yeah. it is. Not, <laughs> not cooking it, not <laughs> loving it. Oh no. Um, SG Bolt Swan. I am getting into art journaling, and I wanted to know if it is necessary to seal the pages. My thought is that it depends on what you are using to create the art journal. Some crafters on YouTube believe that you must seal the journal pages and others think that it's not necessary. What are your thoughts? My thoughts are that um, I don't I don't seal them, but what I like to do is wax them. Like take a, a bar of paraffin wax and I will rub it over the page because if I'm afraid, like sometimes if you use, um, if you decoupage, like use Mod Podge mm -hmm. to stick some things down, mm -hmm. especially if it's the glossy kind, it will, um, your pages will stick together eventually. They, oh, especially really? Here. Yeah. So I just take a bar of pair, like canning wax uh -huh. or an old candle or, or beeswax and I'll just rub it over the page and it gives it, and also will even out um, the sheen. So if you have, if you've glued something down and you can see a shiny spot mm -hmm. where you had glue, it will just kind of give it an all over even sheen. And if you don't feel, and if, and if you don't like that sheen, you can go over it with a heat gun and it will, it'll even everything out. It'll kind of let that wax melt and really it seals everything in. It's going to protect it from sticky fingers that might be looking through your journal like your kids. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it will, you know, yeah. Yeah. It'll, That's it. Yeah. It'll protect it. I gotta look at the time. I cannot see the time at all. Ah. I can't tell what it says. 12 minutes. <laughs> I'm going to close up on my face. <laughs> Hello world, it's my face. <laughs> oh, it's not too scary. <laughs> Every once in a while, it's a crack. Oh, sorry, <laughs> call Amazon for all your cracked uh, computer monitors now that uh, my face is in there. <laughs> okay, Belinda Wiggins says, I know a lot of homemade journals are made with watercolor paper, do you have to use just so on that paper or do the mixed media? No, no, it's fine. It's got sizing in it, it's gonna be fine. Only just so if you need to, like really absorbent papers and papers that aren't intended for journaling. And if it's, like you were saying earlier, if it's good, better quality watercolor paper, yeah. that will take that, so, right? Right, right. CCBG. Hello, crafty ladies. Could you help me, please, with advice on using ink tents pencils on fabric? I seem to end up with bleeding, and once that happens, I don't know how to rescue the drawing and the fabric. Okay, well, what I've done, I've used it on canvas before. I haven't done that much with ink tents on paper, I mean, on fabric, but um, I, I would first clip it to a piece of foam cord or cardboard or hardboard or something so I can stretch the fabric out a little bit. And then I actually spray the fabric with a fine mist of water and then I start coloring in. And you can go a little bit inside your lines if you have like a, a pattern you're trying to color in so it kind of can kind of bleed out to those lines. Um, I'll also take a little bit of fabric medium on a paintbrush and kind of, then I would kind of blend it out with a fabric medium if I want to get up to a line because that will help lock it. Um, it'll help. It's supposed to be permanent on fabric, but it just gives you that little bit of extra protection of having like an acrylic um, kind of on there. So that, that really should do you pretty well, I think. If you dampen the paper, 
do your coloring inside but stay within like give yourself a quarter of an inch within the lines then use fabric medium to kind of spread it out to the lines i think you'll you'll be in good shape hmm. but stretch it out good on a board so that you can you know you're not dragging in it's not bunching up on you as you're trying to color lulu mommy 1000 says welcome back ladies I just bought two watercolors. Will you please explain how to fill the wells and whether or not to let the paint dry in between uses? Thanks. Looking forward to AAC Season 3. Oh, yeah. Let me go grab my palette so I can show you that. Um, it's very, very easy. It's as easy as it sounds. This is the palette I use most of all at home because it's got my M. Graham paints in it. Those are my favorite. I do have a Pike palette in my uh, in my to-go box. But um, they're wet. They're not dry. No, they're dry. They're dry? They're dry, yeah. They look wet. Well, these are the M. Graham paints, so they have honey in them, so it keeps them semi-moist. Oh. And um, and so I just squeezed them in, and I let them dry up as much as they were going to. It took a couple days. What I did, after I filled them, I just squeezed the tube right in there, fill it right up, and then I put the lid on slightly off like that so the air could circulate, but it wasn't, thing dust wasn't going to fall in, just help it dry a little bit quicker and um, then you're all set to go you just uh, use a wet brush and pick it right up and I needed an extra well I don't use Payne's gray very much but I wanted to for a particular project so I took a little hot glue and made myself a little well I used low temperature hot glue so it didn't melt my palette and then I put my little Payne's gray in there to use for that particular <laughs> so I have a little temporary spot there but um, I love the, the M. Graham paints for that reason I'm not sponsored by them or anything but I just I just uh, really think they're good value. But there, that's how you do that. And yeah, I would let it dry. You don't have to, but I would let it dry before you use it because you won't waste so much. And Sheila Allen asks, I have a question about melt and pour soap making. What is the difference in soap bases? You've used the avocado cucumber a couple of times, but quality wise, what's the difference between that and say shea butter? Um, I don't think there's necessarily a quality difference. It's more of the properties you want your soap to have. The avocado cucumber mix I was using because it's a dispersion soap. So if you want to put um, embedments in it, such as oatmeal or you know tea leaves or lavender or something like that, it's going to keep your soap. It's going to keep all those embedments from sinking to the bottom. Mm -hmm. So that's why I use that. But um, a lot of times I'll use regular glycerin soap because it's clear and I want to like, uh, oh, something that's kind of fun that I like to do is go to the dollar store or, or um, any department store and get like rubber duckies and like Oriental Trading has all those really cute rubber duckies Little and things, stuff yeah, yeah. and um, I'll get those and I will pour soap and you can if you don't have soap mold you can use like um, yogurt containers mm -hmm. or whatever and you pour the soap in and then you put your your toy in there and you can take a little mm. piece of masking tape and kind of put it over like if it's a yogurt cup over it to kind of hold the bottom of the ducky or whatever in so it's in the soap or you can completely embed the toy in the soap and then um, I don't add any fragrance or um, uh, smells to it because I don't want to it to break out anybody's skin it's such a gentle soap and then you've got these really cute soaps with toys in it so kids want to clean themselves because it's a yeah. toy they get they get a prize right. for getting clean so I like to make those for, um, for like craft bears and gifts and stuff um, and I would use a clear one because I want to see the uh, the toys in there so you know it just depends on what you're going for they're all about the same quality especially if you're buying it from like a you know a nice soap company um, I shopped at the chemistry store.com they have really good prices um, you know you're gonna pay for shipping but you're gonna save so much on the cost of your soap base that it's it's still saving so much more over craft store prices to buy at a place like that and there's other suppliers too I'm just I have ordered from the chemistry store and I haven't ordered from the other ones if I find a supplier that works I like it and I get good service and I just I don't you know I tend not to mm -hmm. stray if I'm happy uh, so there that's we good for more? No um, yeah, let's do one more. I have no idea what time it is. I have my glasses oh, okay. on. I can't read that tiny little, uh -oh. <laughs> tiny little number on there. <laughs> Barbara Lovett. Hi, gals. Welcome back. I've just taken up card making at the age of 68. Good for How you. Did that happen. <laughs> I know what you mean. Be careful. I card making is, is, is a gateway. Oh, yeah. <laughs> gateway craft to <laughs> so many things. <laughs> it is. Oh, oh, how about this? I'm going to save so much money by making my old Christmas oh, yeah. cards this that's year. That's a good one. <laughs> is that like the, the line that gets us started oh, right yeah. there? <laughs> how do I get a clean, sharp image when stamping? Any advice as to what inks, cardstock, and technique is best? Okay, you want a smooth cardstock, you want a padded surface, 
and you want well it depends on what kind of stamp you have right. um i like to work on like a piece of craft foam or a mouse pad mouse um pad. yeah mouse pad works really well unusual. that's right a put piece that of phone but if i oh, can't yeah. find any of oh. that stuff because somebody not me misplaced it yep <laughs> <laughs> and and you want to make sure you stamp straight down without rocking your stamp unless you're using a curved mount like a rock -a block or a mega mount um so you know make sure you have a squishy surface that's you know not too squishy fun foam is or a mouse pad is perfect put your smooth cardstock down um ink up your stamp and you don't want to put the stamp to the ink pad you want to flip your stamp over and you want to put the ink pad to your mm -hmm. stamp and then you can see that you're getting ink on the raised areas of your stamp and not smushed in around but yeah <laughs> very light you should tap it very lightly and then press straight down Hold it for about 15, 20 seconds. Give it time. You want that ink to go from the stamp onto the paper. Lift it up, and then you've got your impression. And make sure you let it dry before you try coloring it. Yeah. And that's primarily with rubber stamps. But yes. the acrylic stamp, just in and of itself, does not do as a refined, crisp yes. stamp because it has <laughs> more squish to it. And, and I always have a tendency to push the push too, too hard. hard because I'm used to using... The rubber which is all we right. had for quite a while yeah. right so, right yes yeah. so acrylic stamp so they kind of have a different look and mm -hmm. although acrylic stamps are i think maybe a little easier to get started with because you can really see where you're putting it right, right. um oh, but they're great to use they're yeah. wonderful and there are different levels and of they do, acrylic stamps they do do lovely images but yes slightly different yeah and there's a that you do like i notice when i'm stamping if i'm using like an acrylic stamp because i like i like the sentiments on acrylic blocks sometimes because i can see exactly where i'm going <laughs> to put it yeah. yeah um but then i always test it first because i have a tendency to push really hard because I, i'm used I to the rubber stamps um but you will notice that like some brands of stamps are a lot better than other brands of clear stamps they are. like your paper tray ink clear stamps they really hold the ink really well and they just give, they give you a much crisper impression than like an ink ink do a clear stamp which is more of like a silicone and it wants to let the ink bead up on it and just doesn't um work and as well. aren't those too don't they recommend that you stamp those on a hard surface or harder it's not i still would you i really still use a mouse pad i just i vary my pressure but yeah. um but i mean and if it's something that's just a line artwork you're not going to need as much pressure mm -hmm. as if it's something that has a lot of solid area and if you're using um a clear stamp and it's not performing very well it feels like the ink is skipping if you use an eraser like a pink eraser or an emery board and you scuff the surface of the stamp it will grab the ink a lot better and give you a much better impression do you hear about those new polymer no polymer stamps what new polymer stamps <gasps> please what <laughs> No, no, we, we can go. I'm already on the <laughs> okay. okay, what what is this? Yes, new stamp? it's this new polymer stamp. It's all the rage now. It's stamping up, and you have to put it on the you when you put it on the pad. You watch the ink. You have to make sure it all sucks up. Oh yes, you want to check it out. It's called polymer. 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 Huh. Is that what it is? But but all the, the clear sure stamps were polymer. Polymer is a type of plastic. This is something new. Something new. Oh, yeah, it's something new, and they're all excited about it. Oh, well. Yeah. Probably because everyone got sick of the stamps that you put on the back of the clear Stampin' Up stamps, the cushions, and they'd fall off. Yes, so I stopped using the stickers off. on there. Oh, that was oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> that was so oh, we'll have to check it out. Oh, yeah. Well, there you go. You heard it from Lorraine. We'll have to check that out. <laughs> if I find a link and remember to post it, I'll yeah. those stamps, I will, I will try to do that. Well, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and check out the links below for more Ask a Crafter goodness. You can leave your comments and questions below and they um, should hopefully get, get answered on an upcoming show if we ever get through this jar full of questions. Yeah. Um, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy crafting. Yeah.